Baldur's Gate 3 is great. I think most people agree that it is an awesome game, and so far almost everyone that I know seems to enjoy it in some way or the other. But Baldur's Gate 3 is also very different from other games that size. Larian, the company who made the game, is a little bit smaller than what you would probably expect, so they might have had a harder time actually financing the whole thing. And also Baldur's Gate had a notoriously long development time, which is also something that usually a lot of companies avoid, because on big projects costs quickly ramp up. So what happened was that quite quickly some devs might have gotten a little bit scared of what it actually means for the industry if players get used to games like Baldur's Gate being the norm. One of the most famous statements was probably the one from Xalavia Nelson Jr., who is a very successful game developer himself, who questioned the idea of a raised standard for RPGs in the future. But I actually think that might just be the sign for a much bigger problem in the game development industry today. Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk a little bit about the games industry and what's going on with it at the moment. I'm gonna do my best, but I'm not sure if I can cover everything in one single video. So subscribe to my channel if you want to stay up to date. Now, if you take a look at Nelson's tweets, he actually raises some good points, at least from a developer's side. You can quite easily find them on Google, they are still on his Twitter or X profile, and a lot of other pages have archived them so far. Some of the points he makes are a little bit hard to check. I don't know if there were really over 400 developers only working on this game, but I understand that it can be risky for any developer, AAA or not, to make a game in just the same way as Baldur's Gate 3 was made. 2003 was no doubt a great year for gamers. We've been spoiled, there have been so many good games coming out. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, Alan Wake 2 and Hi-Fi Rush are just a few games that exceeded my expectations, and I'm sure you guys can think of a lot of more titles down in the comment section. But 2003 was also a notoriously bad year for game developers. We've seen it over and over in the news, many companies that were somehow involved in the gaming sector had to lay off people due to a apparently quite bad financial situation. The reasons are for many people quite clear. We had Covid, everyone was staying at home playing video games, so the companies had a need for more employees and basically hired everyone they could get their hands on. And now this boom has not only kind of died down, but we are also in quite a bad economic situation due to various wars going on and inflation just skyrocketing. And I can kind of see that for a company it might be quite scary that suddenly also their audience is raising their expectation for the products. But I also think that this is actually not really the point. While Nelson is looking at the whole situation from a developer's point of view, which makes sense, he is a developer, most players don't really care about that. They don't care about how much time or how much money it takes to make the game, they care about the experience of the final product. I actually think that Nelson makes a pretty thoughtful argument in his tweets. And I get that there is a lot of risk involved in making games like Baldur's Gate 3. But what people praise about the game and what they see is not a production process or any things like this. They like the fact that when they got the game, at release, it felt like a finished product. It was coherent, in and of itself complete. You got a huge explorable map, you got a really fun multiplayer system, you had a story that felt done, not in a way that it didn't have any open ends or points where you could add on to the narrative, but it seemed to be in a state where the authors itself would probably say, I'm okay if that goes out the door like this. And all of that without any kind of microtransactions or the need for you to wait a few weeks for the next part of the experience to come out. Also, at release there were no game-breaking bugs or any server problems. It just felt like a complete product that doesn't ask any more of you. And that's what is popular with players. So basically what players heard is that they cannot ask a developer to make games that are more like Baldur's Gate 3. And to be honest, I think that is something that people can ask of a developer when they pay for a game, no matter if it's an indie passion project or a AAA title. However, while I think that there is still a lot of talking past each other going on in this specific discussion, we are still on the internet after all, it made me think of something that might turn out to be a little bit of a bigger problem for the game industry in the future. I already mentioned that in 2023 many gaming companies fired a lot of their staff and that this is often seen as an overhiring problem that happens during Covid. However, there are voices claiming that while 
COVID might have been the final nail in the casket, the industry has become less and less sustainable for a while already. Apparently this is especially true for Western developers, while Asian companies don't seem to be as affected. Oli Barter from Forbes for example wrote about the fact that Japanese game developers had less problems during COVID and the time afterwards, which might be because Japan in particular has a very specific work culture where it is quite hard to fire people, but also because Japanese companies apparently run a tighter ship when it comes to budgets and work mentality. In the West on the other hand, gaming companies are very big, budgets are very big and apparently expenses are also not reported transparently and high spending is often overlooked by management since even internally everything seems to live off a big hype about the released product. Now I do have some numbers here, this is not in any way a proper statistical study or anything, I just got them from Wikipedia. And I also looked at a handful of companies that just popped into my head. Also for things like budgets and revenue, sometimes I wasn't able to find anything at all, but I still think this is enough information to get at least a broad picture. Now what you can see here is that a lot of Western companies like Activision Blizzard, Ubisoft, EA are actually quite big if you compare them to the likes of Nintendo, Square or MiHoYo which are among the bigger Asian companies. Now you could easily say that, okay, hey, Nintendo and Blizzard, they are doing like a little bit more than just making games. But even companies like Epic or Riot count a few thousand people. One interesting exception that I found was actually Konami, which has almost 9,000 employees, which makes it the biggest Japanese game developer basically, until I found out that about half of them don't really work in game development, but are actually doing fitness and lifestyle centers. But that just proves that you shouldn't take anything here as pure undisputable facts. It would also be quite interesting if you would actually be able to look at the budgets of the games themselves, but that information is usually not released publicly. Both employees and revenue are only two numbers and you cannot in any way rate a company by only those two factors, just to make that very clear. But maybe you can get the picture why it was so shocking for some companies or some developers that games like Baldur's Gate 3 or Alan Wake 2 suddenly were that successful. Both Larian and Remedy are actually quite small companies, with Larian counting 450 employees in total and Remedy counting only 360. Even if they have similar budgets to make the actual games, they have to sustain a way smaller complex of people. And to be fair, this is not the first time this happens. There are also cases like Bethesda, which is quite a small company that makes big games and probably most notably from software, which at the last count only had 332 employees and was still able to make hugely successful titles like Elden Ring. And if you remember last year, I think Elden Ring already made a few people a little bit uncomfortable, basically questioning some of the common industry practices by not putting in microtransactions, by not making it a service game. I think I want to nominate this award to uh, my reformed orthodox rabbi Bill Clinton. What AAA game developers are afraid of is not that game development will become unsustainable if players model their expectations after games like Baldur's Gate 3. They are afraid because, at least in the West, game development is already unsustainable and has been for a while. And those big expensive systems that have established themselves over the years, like a Ubisoft or an EA will basically lose the justification for their existence. No one can say anymore that you actually need a big company to make a big game. Those big machineries like Ubisoft or EA need a much bigger amount of funds coming in constantly to be sustainable, which is the reason why they either try to churn out as many games as possible in as little time as possible, or they kind of have to resort to service games and microtransactions. Now what does that mean? Will Big franchises, loot boxes and things like that soon be a thing of the past because of games like Baldur's Gate 3? No. I think the main message of Nelson's tweets and a lot of things that game developers were pointing out in this discussion is that those systems exist, they still make money, so they won't disappear that fast. Gachas are still doing immensely well and Fortnite is still selling a lot of skins. And while I'm not a fan of microtransactions, loot boxes and all that stuff, I don't necessarily think that games as a service are a bad thing 
per se. But one thing this whole situation shows that I hope stays in developers' heads is that maybe a lot of those more questionable methods to make, market and monetize a game are not the only way. And there's still a lot that we can do to make an industry that makes stuff that we all love a little bit better for all of us. That's all I want to say for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. You guys know the drill. I hope you have a nice day and see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.